It's very hard for me to speak after Roger Glass and Elizabeth, but I've always tried, and I'm going to try today. So I am coming from uh, Ruhenje Rifaro Hospital. It's in almost 100 kilometers from Kigali City, and it's a big hospital because it's one of the, f uh, the four Rifaro hospitals not located in the capital. I'm going to share with you the difference that I have when I didn't have a mentor and how I became after having one. This photo I'm giving you, to, uh, <coughs> starting with, it is a PBS a news hour. It is <coughs> one of the leading televisions in the United States. They came to my hospital when I was working in a rural hospital, Kinihira Provincial Hospital. I didn't invite them. They came just surprisingly. And they wanted to document the best practices that led to zero cases of HIV transmission of from mother to child in three consecutive years, 2013, 2014, and 2015. Uh, that is at the top of the hill is where my hospital is located. It is closer to Chigali. It's 60 kilometers uh, from uh, Chigali. That's where I was working before I went to NIH. So when they came, we explained to PBS that the success we had was due to community engagement, active peer educators, technology, but also a quick hospital response. We were following up pregnant women who are HIV positive. But this story I bring is very frustrating because I was not aware of the success myself, even if I was the director of the hospital. So data were analyzed at the central level because we were reporting irregularly, and the PBS surprised me with good news that I was actually doing well. And this success has never been published in any peer-reviewed journal, and I was very frustrated. Then, why? No skills, no scientific rationale, or what happened? So, then I was reading about mentorship. I found out that people who had mentors did better than the people who didn't have one. In this paper that was done in the United States about family medicine uh, faculty, they found that 74.1% who had mentors were able to publish a paper in a peer-reviewed journal. 55.6% published an abstract, and 73.1% presented a talk or poster in a local or international uh, journal. This is even statistically significant. It, it shows that having a mentor and not having one really makes a difference. I'm going to bring you back to my physician role. When I was freshly graduated, I wanted to be a famous surgeon. And I wanted to replace one of the big surgeons who were at my hospital now, Ruhenjeri. He was called Dr. Toll, and many Rwandans people know that name. And I wanted to study, and I had a good mentor, Dr. Alberto Dolar, who wanted to teach me. Really, we did an intensive bedside surgery training, and he taught me how to operate all general surgery procedures, including removing that tumor. That tumor was, I removed it. But that is not the end of the story, because in 2013, as a younger scientist without a mentor, you don't know sometimes what is key or not. So I had a very serious case of someone bleeding inside hepatocellular carcinoma, secondary to hepatitis B, and I operated on the patient, and the patient went well, and arriving here after surgery, and the patient was doing great, he was coming for chemotherapy, they asked him who operated on him, and they told him, he told the, the doctors here in, in Kigali that it was me, and they called me. How did you do that operation? Because I did the liver resection, and I did left hepatectomy. And they said, that you couldn't do that in a rural area. But I did it, and it was successful. And they said, then you have to write a, a case report. And I told them, I don't know how to write that kind of case report. I'm just doing my job as surgeon. <laughs> and then they helped me, the professors here, to write this case report that was published in the medical journal. And this could show you how frustrating if you are doing good things and you could share your knowledge with other people, but you don't have skills, you don't have a mentor to do that. Then here comes 2016. 
under the championship of Dr. Roger Glass, Dr. Erizeo Perez, Dr. Anne Samra, and the Rwanda Minister of Health, a, a new program has taken place. Rwanda young scientists are being mentored in, in NIH. I was there the first, and now there is the second, and we have the third. And also, we know the NIH Fellowship for African Scientists has started. My last, uh, and this one, was published in the Catalyst, the, new, uh, in the journal in NIH. I was being mentored by Dr. Ernst Sumner, and I was very overwhelmed by NIH, and I wanted to do something. And I decided that I have to do that here for my country, and also for my Rwandan doctors, because we wanted to gain more experience from NIH. After just 12 months, with excellent mentorship, I had four publications, and in many abstracts that were accepted in the African Diabetes Congress, the African Diabetes, the American Diabetes Congress, and Diuretic, and I even published the one paper in Nature, and I was very glad to, to present this paper in NIH. So for young scientists, to be successful, you need a mentor anyhow. You need to have a strong reason you are invested in your research or clinical work. You need clear goals, otherwise you will fulfill mentors' dreams. Always discipline, work hard, and never give up. Young African scientists, we have potential. They have strong will to contribute to research. But how and where to meet you guys, mentors? Thank you very much.